Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how many people were, were bored with their stories and shit, but no one. So I'll be back. Uh, it's all good. But I, I saw uh, my brother Neil Armstrong in the house. He's he's a good guy. I interviewed him ten years ago, and then I interviewed him a couple months ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, that's my that's my brother right there. Uh, uh, his daughter Lily is such a Lily. Good, yes. <laughs> as, as you know. Uncle, mm -hmm. Uncle Rhett says hello to Lily Chan, but yeah. So uh, you know, it's it's kind of funny to do talk about you know like like uh, Fit Platoon uh, is right. an equivalent to like uh, um, to the Junkies because they're or 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 even or even like the Pickles because they're like a uh, Junkies is a little bit more multicultural whereas Pickles were more Filipino Americans and that's right. uh, that's the closest thing and stuff and and actually the ninety seven ITF is when we bat we battled fifth platoon uh, for the team battle so you know lily says hi hi lily it's hard to go to sleep <laughs> uh, so. um nice um Rhett, as someone who has dj'd in nightclubs around the world how do you think the current pandemic and future recurrences will affect your busy travel schedule do you think you'll focus more on local gigs for the foreseeable future uh, honestly yeah probably i don't i mean i miss traveling but you know, it's, uh, uh, it's. I mean, shoot, my favorite place to go to is Japan, and even you know, Neil can tell you that. So that's like my favorite place and stuff. Um, you can go uh, visit Neil. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can go visit Neil. I know when he moves. <laughs> I, I speak more. I speak more Nihongo than he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, but when he moves back over there and he, he goes to Japanese school, he's gonna speak more Japanese than I do and shit. But uh. Mm -hmm. Uh, honestly, it's it's kind of scary and stuff like that, dude. So, cause you know, so um, I take care of my mom, so I'm kind of like her caregiver. Right. Uh, um, so my mom is uh is diabetic, so she's considered a high risk. Yes, you really can't. That's so I, you know, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like have to like it's crazy just because you know, with all the shits going on and all the conspiracy theories and stuff, um, mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, bottom line, it's real, you know, and, and I knew few people that passed away. I mean, Ty from the UK, a legendary MC passed away to, uh, COVID-19. Kiku's, uh, brother-in-law passed away. Uh, 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 Quite a few uh, friends, uh, some of my friend, friends of their relatives passed away and stuff. Uh, so, or some people I know, you know, got it. I'm not going to mention their names and shit like that. But it, it's it's real. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter, young or old. It's like you know, so no, it doesn't it, discriminate. Mm -mm. Doesn't discriminate, man. So regardless of what sh shit is, it's I don't know. It's, it's crazy times, man. It's, yeah. Um, but we had, uh, when it happened in March, we had a, we had a close down the school and that was a big thing. I mean, we were kind of learning going to go like, kind of like venture into going to online type shit, but it forced us to be more, okay, we got to go online now. Yeah. We had to learn how to adapt. Uh, I think we were very really lucky in many ways that we had, a, we still had our business where we can still provide something. Uh, and kind of make some money. We still, we had to get loans. We had to do things. We, you know, uh, mm -hmm. our community, our students, they, God bless them, man. They, they stuck with us. They still took our classes. You know, they're very patient with us. Uh, we were, we we're scheduled to open up in August, but I don't know because we got shut down, locked down again last week. So we don't know how long, you know, mm -hmm. so, uh, it's scary. It's not gonna. The saying goes, it's not. It's not gonna. It, it, it's not gonna be normal until like I don't know. Maybe maybe end of two twenty one. I don't know. Uh, twenty twenty one. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. But even then, you never know. I mean, you still how see you see how it's a shit show right now with us. Whereas everybody in the other uh, uh, other countries are opening up and shit. You know, you're like kind of like what the. F uh huh. <laughs> Yo. Um. But again, if you're lucky to travel. You you start you really realize what's really going on. Like, I you know you hear people say travel, yes, because you gotta get out of your bubble. That's when you realize you ain't shit. Like 
when you go to other countries mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you, you know, even their news is different from ours. Even this, you know, there are cars to certain things, but this, it's, it's a wholly different thing. You know, again, you, you, we're not, you know, we're so stuck in, you know, in our bubble. People don't realize how like they're looking at us like we're crazy and shit like that, you know? And just, and it's kind of, you know, you can ask any DJ that's got like pissed off because it's like, how come the other countries are able to open up and we're, we can't go because of all this shit, you know, and, and not to try to get political and stuff, but it's just like, you know, it's just, it's, 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 um, we got to, we got to, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, we're selfish. I hate to say that, man. Just we are. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. and it's it's really sad and stuff. You don't. I mean, it, and it, I don't. We don't. I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen. You don't know. Everything's a day by day thing. Um, at least on our end, we're trying to you know just try just watch what's going on. Just try to be stay focused, stay positive. Try to adapt as best as we can. Uh, um. I mean, as DJs, any all DJs, you know, we're Neil will tell you, anyone will tell you, we're adapting as best way we can. That's the, you know, and we've been lucky, very lucky. Um, and of course, it opens up a lot of things too. Also, like those who were used to going to clubs, for us, shit, you know, for the type of DJs we are, it's like shit. We get to do, we be, we do, we really what we want to do. You know, we have to we rely, uh, 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 doing the club service and shit. You know, I'm not down in that stuff but you know everybody there's a there's a everybody has their own lane and stuff but the lane that we do you know knock on wood and shit we're still doing our thing and then and end of the day we music in general it's therapy for us and it's you know if we can provide something for someone that likes it and it's something that we'd like to do it's a win-win situation it it takes off the stress right i mean i mean the irony is like i I, I find myself being more busy at home now doing this, you know, doing mm-hmm. this right now, like mm-hmm. teaching online and then juggling, uh, you know, at the same time, taking care of my duties as a son and stuff like that, you know, or whatever, like mellow with, you know, you know, like mellow D style short uh, baths. They got, they got kids. Uh, Chalk's kids are, they're, they're older. And so Chalk's, uh, 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 the only one out of all us has like has grandkids and shit, you know. So, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, like we're all like, you know, and some we're still lucky. We're str- like everyone else. We're all struggling, but we're we're very lucky to still what we're going we can do at the meantime right now, and that's all we can do. Um, we're adapting the best way we can, and I have to say, th- you know. Thank you to our community and anyone that's even listening right now and shit that's that, like tuning into the to the beat because you know the beat junkies started their own online school beatjunkies.tv. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we have a record pool. We have a, you know we're we we doing things and regardless if they, they're not making money, you know people are still supporting us and that means a lot. And then so we try to do whatever we can to give back to them for all the money that they're spending. We're trying to do as much as we can to give back to them to make them feel, you know. It's worth it what they're doing, you know. So it's a, it, you know, it really comes down to it. It's a community thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we support each other, other DJs. You know, this is the first time you ever see people like really getting together and supporting each other. So, uh, shout out to DJ Danny West representing DJ City and shit like that. So mm-hmm. I seem to jumped in, but yeah, man, it, it's like during this pandemic, it, it's cool to see people, especially in the DJ community, regardless of what lane you're in. Supporting each other. Oh uh, my, haha, my my nephew Ivan from Canada is. <laughs> nice. yeah, so. yeah, it's nice because everyone's kind of on a level playing field right now. Yeah, it, and it kind of you know, and it kind of shows where your where your heart's at, really, you know. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I, I used to be being that hardcore you know, from the hip hop club, you like battle you like this and that. <laughs> uh, I always, you know, learning now that it's like hip hop is the only culture that at the time we don't share our secrets because you know competition and shit but you hear mm-hmm. other genres other cultures they in order for them to 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 succeed to expand is that they share the culture right and you know if you asked us a couple of years ago about opening up a school we'd be like are you, 
What are you talking about? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, so there's always going to be someone better than you. But the thing is, is you, you have to be you. And in, in order for our – instead of sending us complaining, we just got to – uh, share the you know share the knowledge. Right. Knowledge ain't shit if you don't share it, right? You know, and mm -hmm. in order for our culture, in order for our DJ culture, even for the hip hop to survive, and you can tell there's a generation and cultural gap, right? Definitely. OGs are like you know OGs, like OGs are like man, what you know about this shit? And young cats are like man, fuck you and shit like that. There's a disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. And in some ways that's our fault for you know like going it. so. We got, you know, in order, you know, instead of complaining about shit, show it to them. We can't force everybody, but it's like, at least show it to them. It's up to them. And we have to change the attitude of like, like we know everything. That was, and that's the problem and shit, you know. We don't want to sound like our parents. Our parents were like, like, what's this shit, right? Mm -hmm. Ironically, we sound, we start, a lot of people sound the same. A lot of people complain that hip hop is dead. No, it's not. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just that. A lot of our, my a lot of my generation got married, got kids, had responsibility, which is nothing wrong with that. But it's just now it's 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 just technology is also make you lazy too now. There's it's so much shit on your shit. You can Google and like really find shit out there. It's it's the same thing back then. It was hard to find. There was not that many shit. You had to go dig for it. Now you got to dig for it through a lot of shit. And you just got to find what you like. And what I've learned, mm -hmm. yeah. And what I've learned. Don't concentrate on shit that you don't like. Don't give it that energy. Just do what you do. And let them do their thing. The mm -hmm. same thing. I might not like all the younger stuff the young cats are doing. I like some of them. I like, you know, but again, it's, it's, uh, um, that's their lane. But I can learn, I can learn, I learned a lot of stuff from them that I can, that can apply to what I can do. You know, right. I, I've learned a lot of, like social media, I was I sucked at social media and shit like that. I had to learn that from my from my godson Nico. Mm -hmm. I had to I had to learn. I actually learned a lot of shit from Selection, you know. They're they're like two three year generations from under us, and they're like you know, they're making moves and shit. And I'm learning like picking their brains and shit. They, you know, they got a radio show on on Apple Music, you know, mm -hmm. that you know, and they grew and they grew up listening to us, you know. So it's like we got to. There's always something to Give learn about. Yeah. yeah. There's always something to learn. You just can't, you know, like, I may not agree with everything, but I'm not going to worry about that and stuff. Right. So, but yeah, you know, just trying to, trying to adapt as best as we can and, you know. Nice. Um, so speaking of Beat Junkies TV, have you seen an uptick in registrations as more people are looking to hone their craft from home or possibly have always wanted to learn and now have the time to do so? Yeah, we have a, a pretty good... Uh, we have a pretty good following. Uh, when we first started, like especially going online, uh, we d we have this thing called Homeroom, which is a, a, a pretty much is an interactive online uh, mm -hmm. uh, class or DJ class. How we teach it is almost like how we teach uh, at our school, but the difference is in this virtual. But we had to learn how to how to like adapt because usually we we like to have the students in front of us and we can tell them, but it's kind of hard. Uh, we were doing it for free just to, you know, to show what people are doing. And compared to, you know, like, you know, our students are very local from our students from our school. Now we're having people from different all over the, you know, people from all over the world. Like uh, uh, I have a student who's in my, in my in a particular class uh, uh, is from Indonesia. Wow. Yeah. So he, he you know, dials in. Uh, I had another student. Uh, I did a master class. It was at, I did this at Saturday, on a Saturday night, like, and and I had, and a student was from UK, so it was like and it was like four o'clock in the morning while it was like maybe seven o'clock my mm -hmm. time at night. So you know this it, it, it's 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 really uh, humbling to see someone, you know, from different countries making the effort. Mm -hmm. All right, and you know, of course, we also have like younger kids, and, and uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, women signed up which is great we have a a, a a women division from the school called ladies of sound so it's like there's a community our community is is a very small but strong but within that community we also have a lot of uh, women in there that's also uh, uh, supporting each other 
to, to you know, uh, whatever through DJing, but then learning from different other things. And we, we support that because a lot of people don't know uh, DJ Symphony uh, is our only lone member uh, uh, of the Beat Junkies. And she's she's ICI's younger sister. She stopped she stopped DJing a long time ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Symphony, uh, uh, she was battling. She was battling heavyweights and shit like that. So yeah. she she was so you know she was inspired. We, we used to tell her about Jazzy Joyce. She got inspired by Jazzy Joyce because at the time Jazzy Joyce was battling also 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 battling because Jazzy Joyce not, at the time you there were very few female DJs back then, but Jazzy mm -hmm. Joyce was dope. I mean, I remember her from Jazzy Joyce and Sweet Tea. It's my beat. But the fact that she was battling cash money, I was like, oh, shit. She almost took out cash money, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like, oh, shit, she's a girl. But then she said, oh, shit, she's dope. We always – it goes back again. Mm -hmm. Philippi you know, I, I want to be known as a dope DJ that happens to be Filipino. She wanted to be known as a dope DJ that happens to be a female and she's Filipino. Right, uh, Cutting Candy would tell you that she was also like a uh, 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 influence. A lot of like you know, like DJ Shorty and Cutting Candy will tell you about Symphony. Like, there's very few footage of Symphony. You, you, it's out there somewhere where she's actually you know like battling and shit. Like you know, and at the time she was only 16 years old. We're like probably 1920. She's like 16. Like yeah. whenever we go, you know, we meet up her at her brother's house. When she when we leave, she go she go on practice on her own, and then next you know we're like oh shit, you know like that's when we say when we seen her she doing shit, mm -hmm. it's like all right we're gonna show you some shit, and next you know man, but yeah and it was harder for her too at the time to come out because again Asian parents are hard you know very strict especially when it comes to even with women, she could not leave the house until unless her brother come, uh, could go with her, and there were times when we started doing out out of town gigs they want to hire her but they wouldn't you know. But her father, her parents will not let her go unless her brother goes along, and they don't want her brother; they want her, and shit. So, kind of like you know, kind of messed up the thing and shit. So, but yeah, so we have a, we have a good, uh, strong women community, and and we actually have some dope DJs that are women. I mean, really dope. Shouts to my brother Cog Cognito, NASA influence, culture. Culture King right there. Uh, yeah. But I caught your special guest to all things Dilla said on Shortcut's Twitch channel back in April. How do you feel about the surge in live streaming? And do you think it'll continue after DJs are able to resume playing out? Uh, it's, inc it's, inc it's, it's dope. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't tell. But, I mean, obviously it's starting to become a norm. But like anything, everybody once you know anything that's new is start. Everybody jumped on and shit, right? Right. Uh, I it, it really comes down the cream of the crop. You know, it really you know, and it's all about quality too. Mm -hmm. Um, so quality, and if you're lucky, you know, like obviously, you know, someone like D Nice, God bless him, man. Um, made a big like coming from that our generation and shit like that to do mm -hmm. what he's did. It shows you can do it. I mean, like, there's people. I mean, Jazz Jeff, still doing it, right? He's making it. You know, Spinner, Rich Medina, uh, Craze, A Track, everybody. You know, like you can tell who puts in work and put quality work and stuff. And then these are people that are not even known. They're still putting work. It all comes down to it. It may get saturated, but event, you'll find the ones that you like. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, uh. It might fizzle out. It might not fizzle. Out. I don't know. I can't. I can't say. But uh, for me, I'm not having fun. I mean, I guess I saw the question, so it's probably a good segue. I do the junkies. We do. Our, we do streaming. Um, uh, we have a thing called Watch the Sound. Uh, so uh, you know, we do it different nights. J Rock um, and Melody do this on Sundays. J Rock is is cool because his theme would be all gospel. Playing, playing all dope gospel, funk, soul, house, disco, just dope gospel, mm -hmm. inspirational, and then, and then, but he kill it, and then mm -hmm. Mellow, Mellow was just playing like, 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 grown in sixties, you know, like nineties R and B, nineties hip hop, funk, whatever, right? Uh, and then Chalk would do Friday nights, uh, um, 
and his nick other nickname was Black Carlos. So he he might play house, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, or he might you know he might play some hip hop or funk, right? Me, uh, I, I so the junkies. We also have our own radio station called B Junkie Radio. Uh, it's on on Dash Radio, but mm-hmm. I haven't been on Dash Radio. You know, there's an app. Dash Radio is an app. It's a free app. It's like Sirius XM. We have our own station on there, but I haven't been up there lately just to keep it, you know, because I used to do my show there. We have other shows on there, but because of the pandemic, we can't go to the studio and shit like that. Um, so I have a show called Soundcheck, which is kind of like basically like stretch, like I stretch an arm strong, stretch, stretch, but we don't stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Friday Night Flavors, Wake Up Show. I used to do that show. I have my own show on there, but I can't go over there. Eventually, when we start doing Watch the Sound on Twitch, uh, um, I decided to take that format and 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 to bring it to Twitch. But how can I do? I like I don't want people to look at me. I mean, of course, they can watch me play. But I would play songs. When you listen to radio, you can listen to songs and you can listen to like, when they're mixing stuff. But when mm-hmm. you're doing something visual, it's like you don't want them looking at you while you're playing, right? Uh-huh. You know? So, so I kind of flipped it on some. UMTV raps meets Friday Night Flavors, where I still mix cut it, you know. But um, but I also play music videos. Not I don't even mix videos. Like I actually just like 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 you. If you're watching UMTV raps or Rap City, you know they play they play the actual uh, the music video. Mm-hmm. So I, I get to play a lot of indie hip hop uh, m- music videos or even classic shit. It all depends, you know. So I try to put a little uh, a little mixture. So then when I mix. There's, uh, I, I actually have a screen where it's like you can see just funny images and then me small screen just cutting it up and shit. And then I try to, and I try to, and then you know again I format it like a, like I'm doing a radio show, but I had to think of it as more visually. I'm compared to the other people, uh, uh, the other guys who watch the sound shows. Um, mine may be small, but I, I have a good good small following, which is cool. I, I I'm, a, mm-hmm. I'm trying to build it up and stuff, but. Um, I you know I always say like man hip hop ain't dead there's so much dope shit and I got to play play everything from you know play from anything from Griselda from anything from any gang star you know you know the new gang star to uh, um, all the indie shit like Ty Ferris the uh, 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 you know shit Black Thought you know the new Black Thought's coming out the new Blue Blue in Exile I get to play all that shit you don't get uh-huh. the, I mean you know what I'm saying so and th- those are you know and I like that the people are like, oh, I never seen this, I never heard this shit, you know. So it's real cool. I, mm-hmm. Well, I, uh, will it last? I don't know, but I'm trying to do my best while I still can and shit. Shouts to Delhi Dragon. Salute, salute. Right. When is that again? So people know. I'm sorry. When is Soundcheck again? Uh, so my particular show is uh uh, uh 9:30 to 11 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So that would be. Like eleven or twelve of your time? Yeah, yeah. So it's twelve thirty. Yeah. Twelve thirty to one thirty. One thirty. One thirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Twitch dot TV slash Beat Junkies. We actually, like I said, we have a schedule and stuff. Babu mm-hmm. comes in once in a while. Shortcut does it once in a while, but it's mostly J Rock, uh, Melody, Mr. Chalk, and myself. But I do it Tuesday night. So tomorrow night, I'm actually doing it tomorrow night. Yeah. So I mean, if you can if you can stay up late, peep it out. I think you might enjoy it. Nice. Um, are you currently working on any projects or have anything coming up that you want to promote? Yeah. Oh yeah. Visionaries album, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can safely say the new album is called V. Uh, turns is our fifth album. So uh, uh, the Rawls Matic album. Uh, I'm working with this MC uh, uh, out here from LA named X, XP the Marksman. So, uh, in, independent artist. He he, uh, he actually did a project with a, a whole project with Rock Marciano and stuff. So, uh, working with him. Uh, probably more beat tapes and stuff like that. Um, and just and then and really just uh, junky stuff. Anything you see with the junkies are doing, I'm fully involved with that and stuff. So, and then, I mean, whatever comes up, I guess. But that, like I said, I've been very lucky to keep busy and stuff. So between that, all that, and and uh, having my mom, you know, tell me what to do and drive her around and move stuff, uh, I'm pretty. You're busy. a busy man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Rhett, 
how has the Black Lives Matter movement and numerous instances of racial injustice over the last few months <clears throat> affected the environment in your city or in your home? Man, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. It's pretty, you know, uh, it's pretty heavy, man, you know. Uh, again, being a, a minority, and I think, you know, like, grew, that, you know, I grew up listening to black, uh, you know, black music, you know, Latino music, you know, so like that. It's, you know, it's engraved in me. Understanding being in, you know, my, my parents coming from a third world country and stuff like that. Um, the duality is like, okay. And another thing where we always say how Filipinos are also the, the Puerto Ricans of the West Coast. There's also a little joke too, is that Filipinos are considered the blacks of Asians, okay. you know? Uh, um, and, and the craziest thing that there's a duality of this, like, uh, and a lot of, uh, uh, in a lot of ethnic cultures, there's colorism per se to also status too, because you got light skin and dark skin mm -hmm. in the Philippines, you know, light skin is considered beautiful and successful. Dark skin is considered ugly, poor, lazy. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, and you could see, uh, over there, they even have light skin, like, you know, they actually have light skin, you know, mm -hmm. they talk, I never knew this, how, uh, relatives would say, don't go out in the sun. You don't want to be too dark. Also in the Philippines, we also have, we have, we have black people in the Philippines, uh, the Egrots, uh, 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 that's what, you know, that's one of them. There's d different tribes and stuff like that, but, uh, Egrots is one of them and stuff, you know, uh, it's the same thing you go like you go in Latino culture, light skin, dark skin, mm -hmm. black, you know, there is a, the, 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 you know, uh, you know, we're part of the black diaspora one way or another and stuff like that. I mean, the Philippines is, 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 was conquered by Spaniards. So we have, we have, uh, um, most of our last names are, are Spanish and stuff like that. So, um, so the duality I was going to try to say too is crazy because I was born here. In the, Philipp uh, in the United States. I was born in Huntington Park, California. It was part of East LA and shit. Um, mm -hmm. My parents didn't teach me Tagalog. I understand it to a certain point, especially when I get in trouble, but I'm not really fluent in stuff. Right. They they talked to them. Tagalog is the main dialect for for for, 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 for Filipinos and stuff. Um, they talked among themselves. They would talk to me if I'm in trouble, saying some cuss words and stuff like that, but I mm -hmm. kind of understand, you know. Uh, but I never really speak Tagalog and stuff. Uh, obviously, being here, uh, uh, I'm too Filipino for the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have experienced racism in one way or another. Maybe not as crazy as some of our black brothers and sisters or even our Latinos brothers and sisters, but I've experienced racism. I, you know, I, you know, I noticed there's certain things as 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 Filipinos, as Asians, or Pacific Islanders. We don't have to worry about you know, looking over our back. You know, Asians are considered model minorities and stuff like that. But yes, you know, especially because of the, uh, uh, the culture I'm in, uh, involved in, I've seen a lot and been dealt with and and and, and experienced a lot. Um, and, and to tell you the truth, hip hop. If it wasn't for hip hop, it, uh, I would not I, it actually be more. Uh, I wouldn't actually know about my own culture, being Filipino. You know, seriously. Like, if it wasn't for like Public Enemy talking about Black Power, Kid Frost talking about La Raza, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, being proud of who you are. Of course, when you talk about James Brown, I'm black and I'm, pr I'm black and I'm proud and stuff like that. You know, just learning all these stuff, music. I, you know. If it wasn't for hip hop, I would not learn about who I am as a, as a, was who I am in my culture. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's pretty intense and stuff. And, and it's really, I'm actually proud of the younger generation that's doing it right now because, mm -hmm. uh, our generation was kind of doing it, but they're taking it, you know, they're, they're, yeah. I mean, they may make some things I might not agree, but man. They're doing it though, and you got it. We have to support them and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they're the ones who are gonna. Uh, um, they're the ones who are gonna inherit everything. 
yeah. they're probably saying, fuck this shit, you know? So it's the same thing, like, what we dealt with, with our parents, you know, and my, my parents, when they moved here in 68, they just barely missed the, uh, um, the Watts riots, the whole, you know, yeah. uh, um, and I think there was the, oh man, the, the Asian, Inclu the Inclu Inclusive Act, I forgot what it was, uh, where they were now letting a lot of minorities come through, especially if they had some type of trade. My my father was a mechanical engineer. My mom was an accountant. They had degrees, so it cut, like it was it was cool. The irony now, a lot of Filipinos are nurses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also doctors, uh, engineers, uh, uh, architects. But you go to any hospital in most major cities, at least in the West Coast. Definitely in the East Coast. I know East mm -hmm. Coast, West Coast. You will see a lot of Filipino. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you that. Um, so it's um, it's it's yeah it's very it's 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 a it's it's a troubling time, but it's it's scary time, but it's also it's it's uh, it's hopeful. Mm -hmm. I hope you know. I, I hope. I hope we get through this and stuff like that, you know, but I, I think we will. We just got, as the saying goes, you got the shit, ha you know, shit has to go bad first before it gets good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just hope that we all survive from it and become better human beings from this. Um, I don't know. It's going to, it's, it's crazy, man. But uh, black lives, I mean, I get it. You get it. I, I mean, at least, any type of people understand and once you break it down especially like you know i'm not, i'm not i may not be the most political but i still believe like i still believe you know in, in, in being honorable being good um mm -hmm. and you know being a filipino also being raised catholic and stuff like you know there's certain things i might not agree being the catholic church and stuff but i do believe in the, in the values of like yo man good is good bad is bad you know treat 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 people with kindness and shit. If you see, you know, there are human beings, you know, like that, regardless of our colors and culture and money and stuff like that, you know, when all shit, when all, sh when everything, you, you, you peel away all the layers and shit, you know, we, we all bleed red, uh, you know, the, you know, red blood and shit. So, I don't know, but the, the, our culture is what, you know, what makes us even different as individuals and as people and stuff and we can all learn from each other and we're all connected one way or another so well, yeah I, I don't know if i i don't know if i answered the question right though no no you very much did just wanted to kind of get your opinion um right. Manic, thank you so much for joining me is there anything else that you want to add uh yeah social media guys uh uh you know retmatic for twitter and instagram uh facebook is dj retmatic uh of course uh the b junkies bjunkies.com uh, bjunkiesound.com bjunkies.tv uh, follow us on Twitter uh, for Twitter it's bjunkies uh, for Instagram it's the bjunkies uh, uh, bjunkie iOS is our school for Instagram and bjunkies TV is for our, our online school Instagram and visionaries uh, the visionaries Twitter and Instagram, so, and my Bandcamp, uh, ritmatic.bandcamp.com, you know, I got some mixes up there, I got some, um, some of my, work. <laughs> I know, I got a lot, yeah, I, mean, I got a lot of websites, come on, man, I may not have, you know, may not have a wife and child, but I still got to make money. <laughs> those, those are your children right there. Yeah, those are my children right there. <laughs> But yeah, well, I hope you have a fantastic night, Brent. Thank you uh, thank so you. much. Oh, yeah, real quick, quick, quick. We, oh, yeah. are, uh, we are, the Beat Junkies, we are doing a, a, a Twitch marathon. Twitch uh, this Sunday. Uh, majority of all the Beat Junkies are going to be, uh, we're doing it live uh, uh, at, at our school. And uh, uh, so uh, 12 p.m. start on our, our, our uh, Pacific time. Twitch.tv slash uh, Twitch.tv slash Beat Junkies. Come check it out. Will do. Have a fantastic night. Thank you. Thank you for having me.